What is going on guys? In this video, we're gonna be covering five tips to fix your squat. And I have the amazing Coach Tanya, who's gonna be helping me out, uh, giving you guys these tips because my knees are bothering me right now, all right? And I need her to help me out. And also, whoever said that I wasn't funny, guess what, you're right. So I'm not gonna crack any jokes in this video. So a lot of these tips are coming off of the things that I see in the gym. I am a gym owner, I own the Lion's Den, which is located in Colmar, Hatfield, PA. If you're local, come check it out. Uh, but I, we deal with a lot of athletes who just start squatting all the way to advanced athletes who compete at a high level. And when we test, or just when we're watching athletes lifting, we get a lot of good feedback on things that could probably help you guys out there. So the first tip that we're gonna cover when it comes to the squat has to do uh, with the walkout, okay? A lot of times we see athletes who, when they're walking the bar out, they take way too many steps and they're kind of all over the place. Sometimes the weight is bobbling around, which just makes it a lot harder to be super efficient uh, when squatting. So we have a very simple uh, three-step, and you may even be able to get down a two-step walkout. And once you complete those steps, you're gonna be set and ready to squat. All right, guys, so we have Coach Tiny here who's getting set under the bar. She's gonna take a nice, big, deep breath, and then from there, take the bar off of the rack. Now, from there, she's gonna take her dominant foot and take about a half a step back, and then the other foot is gonna follow half a step. Now, what she does is she typically has a little shimmy step, which would probably be like a two and a half step walkout, uh, which we do see common, and I actually kind of do it too. And then from there is when she would begin her squat, but her feet are gonna be nice and set. She has a good solid base. Everyone's width is gonna be slightly different. She's typically more of a narrow stand squatter, which is totally fine, um, but that's kind of the walkout we're looking for. Now Coach Tanya is gonna show you what we have seen and what we do not wanna see when we're walking it out. So she's kind of walking it out all over the place. She kind of hits the J cup. Her feet are pitter pattering. She took like 18 steps. She's bobbling her head back and forth. Maybe she's head banging to some uh, outcast. I don't know what the heck she likes. Uh, and sometimes we see him do like a hiccup with the barbell. Show him a hiccup with the barbell where you kind of throw the bar up on your shoulders. Yeah, so imagine this was close to your max or a very heavy set of five. We really don't wanna make any issues when it comes to uh, squatting or, or bouncing the bar around. You can even see her plate may actually go into the fifth dimension uh, over there. So do not do this, guys. Get set, try to find that two or three step walkout. All right, guys, tip number two uh, to fix that squat is gonna be to stop dive bombing your squats, okay? When we are doing our squats, we wanna really control the eccentric so that we're keeping good bar path on the way down, using that stretch reflex and coming up uh, nice and strong. Typically what we see is people get in their setup and they just literally fly down to the bottom, they lose all control, bar path is all over the place, and that really doesn't help us with a good squat and bar path on the way up. As you guys can see here, when Coach Tanya is dive bombing very fast, the bar is actually shifting forward. So it's gonna put a lot of pressure into her toes and potentially could actually roll the bar up onto her neck, which is just not be a good situation for anybody. And it just throws off the bar path. So when we are squatting, we wanna make sure that we are controlling the eccentric portion of the lift, lowering the weight under control and keeping that good bar path. As you can see here, guys, Coach Tanya is getting set. Big brace, driving down, controlling that eccentric, tracing the bar path, the same line on the way down as she is coming up. Looking beautiful. All right, so tip number three has to do with breathing. I've reiterated this point a ton, even in the previous video that we just put out about pressing. When we're squatting, we do not wanna breathe during the movement. So when we are taking our breath, we wanna make sure in this case that we're breathing at the top between reps. We don't wanna breathe in the bottom, and we don't wanna breathe while we're squatting. You can actually take a couple of reps without even breathing at all, but make sure that if you need the breath, obviously take it in between your reps at the top. All right, tip number four, guys, common one we see is athletes shifting their weight really far into their toes or really far into their heels, okay? So uh, what we wanna make sure we do is as we squat, we have even displacement in our foot as we're going down and up, all right? So we'll show you guys some examples of that. And if you're wondering what would be a remedy to fix, honestly, a lot of these problems, but specifically this one, uh, tempo squats is great. Tempo squats is one of my favorite variations, especially for tidying up technique. Uh, but if you are finding yourself shifting into your toes or your heels, throw in some tempo squats and make sure that the weight is evenly distributed throughout your entire foot as you're squatting. All right, tip number five 
and it's a little bit controversial, but it's something we figured we would address, is knee cave. Is it the best thing in the world? Probably not. Is it the worst thing in the world? Probably not. So once again, Goldilocks. What I mean by that is when you are beginning to squat, there's probably gonna be some sort of knee cave going on. Typically, that will get better the more you squat. We also see elite level athletes, when they're going for world record squats, their knees may cave slightly, which shows that it's okay. The body is made to adapt. What we don't want is severe knee caving consistently. All right, I think everyone across the board can agree that that's probably not the most efficient way of squatting. So in order to combat that, like I said earlier, squat more. The more you squat, the better you're gonna get and you're gonna grow those muscles, uh, especially the abductors, to keep the knees from caving in severely. Second thing, tempo squats. I love tempo squats. I made a whole video about them up here. Check it out. And third, if you want, you can throw in some exercises specifically to strengthen your abductors if you know that it's a problem. So there you guys have it. Those are five tips to help tidy up your squat technique. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. You learned something and you can take and implement it into your training. We do also have a squat specific program. So there's going to be a high frequency with squatting, leg training. A lot of the, the variations that we had talked about will be in that program. It's also a full program. So you're going to have bench, uh, deadlifting, pressing, but the main emphasis is gonna be improving your squat. It's one of our best-selling programs. You should definitely check it out, and I'll link it down below in the description as well as the comment section. But if you didn't subscribe, make sure you subscribe. Stay a lean, mean, strength machine, and we'll see you guys next time. Peace.